you don't want to get it right and you just, you know, didn't do well on the rational functions test and you, you, and you can drop this quiz, then hey, that's your choice. All right, the next example. The next example is to graph the point negative 2 comma negative pi over 6. So what I would recommend doing, or at least the way that I'm going to explain this, is let's look at this in rectangular form to understand that point. Because a radius of 2 doesn't really make sense right now if we think about it as a radius of negative 2 because distance cannot be negative, correct? correct. Direction can be negative. But we can't have the distance of the radius be negative. So right now, I'm kind of having a little bit of problem with what I should do with a negative 2. However, I know that any points up here, if I just represent it as the radius times the cosine theta sine of theta, I can, put it in rect I can put it back into rectangular form, correct? So why don't we just take this point, which is r comma theta, and why don't we just write this in rectangular form and then plot it as a rectangular form? So it's not always as easy, but at least that will tell me where this graph is. So I'm going to put the work up here. because um, um, So really, this can be written as negative 2 cosine of negative pi over 6 and comma negative 2 sine of negative pi over 6. Everybody else OK? That's the rectangular form. All right. Based on our unit circle, do we remember what the coordinate point is for negative pi over 6? So over here is pi over 6. They have the same reference angle. This one is square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half. So if I have the same reference angle, but it's in the negative direction, I'm basically just reflecting this point across the x-axis. So therefore, what's going to be negative? The 1 half. So I have square root of 3 over 2 comma negative 1 half. So really, I'm doing negative 2 times cosine of negative pi over 6, which is square root of 3 over 2, comma negative 2 times sine, which is negative 1 half. So therefore, I get negative square root of 3, comma positive 1. So let's graph this point. So let's think about this. Um, square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 1 is? So the square root of 3 should be somewhere in between 1 and 2. Like 1 point, I don't know, something. So this is roughly between somewhere between negative 1 and negative 1 and 2. This point is 1. So does it look like that point is right there kind of? Like roughly, does that make sense? Here, it's at 1, right? The height is 1. And then this point is somewhere, some decimal between 1 and 2. I don't know what it, I'm just estimating, right? Just estimating the decimal. But that relatively makes sense. Rectangular. Now, if we look at this polar, we need to represent this polar. We have the same radius, which is 2. Now, we got to think about, though, though, like what should our angle be? Or is our angle? Now, let's think about a rectangular form. Like, OK, is that angle negative 5 or 6? Like, no, that's not, obviously, that's not negative. Negative pi over 6 is over here, right? Is that supposed to be pi over 2? Mm -hmm. No, it's supposed to be 6. But negative pi over 6 is like over here. But do these angles, like I'm just drawing from 0, 0 to that coordinate point, and then I'm drawing like negative pi over 6, don't these angles kind of look like pretty close like reflections of each other? Like where almost I can basically assume that if this has a reference angle of pi over 6, then this has to have a reference angle of pi over 6? Yeah? So um, basically, there's, well, first of all, my coordinate, well, first of all, to answer your question, to graph this correctly, that is the correct point. That's where it's graphed. But it kind of gets confusing because if you graph negative pi over 6, that takes you over here. So what is this 2? It looks like it's a reflection about the origin, doesn't it? It's reflected about the x-axis and then reflected about the y-axis. Yes? Yes? Doesn't it look like it's happening? No? OK. Have we experienced this, this before? Have we? What about in vectors? Remember when we had a vector AB? Does anybody remember what negative AB, what happened to that? Reflected. 
you distribute that to both of them, right? The scalar multiple? See how this got reflected about like the origin? And you guys got to think about that. That's exactly what this negative is. Because guys, what did we just do with this r? The r multiplied by the x coordinate and by the y coordinate. So when you have a negative radius, you're right. The, neg the radius is still r, but what the negative is doing is it's changing the direction. So this negative is technically a negative directional change. It's not a distance change. It's a directional change. You guys see how the vector still has the same magnitude? Right? But what has changed? The direction. Right? So that's what happens when you guys have this negative. You can basically find your original angle. And if you have a negative, you can just reflect it about the origin. OK? What did you just say the first time? He's got to ex explain, well, you gotta explain you things. I mean. <laughs> Does everything I went over kind of make an, a little bit of sense? Yeah, it makes sense. OK, well, good. Then I, I guess I feel I did my job. Yes. Um, sure.